features of Omicron make it more pathogenic than other COVID-19 variants. Researchers used virus-like particles to figure out which components of the SARS-CoV-2 Omicron variant are to blame for the virus's increased infectivity and dissemination earlier this year. This was done during the start of the year, when the virus was rapidly spreading over the world. Antibodies generated against older viral strains are significantly less effective against Omicron, however, those recently boosted have larger quantities of effective antibodies. These findings were presented at a meeting of the United States National Academy of Sciences and published in its proceedings. After studying the impact of various mutations in the Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2, we concluded that in order to develop more effective vaccines, we should consider proteins other than spike. The virus-like particle system allows us to rapidly question fresh variants and assess if their infectivity in cell culture has changed, says Melanie Ott, MD, PhD, director of the Gladstone Center of Virology and a senior author of the present study. In the case of Omicron, it allowed us to have a far greater understanding of how this variant differs from others on a molecular level, the author adds. These discoveries are pretty fascinating. According to one of the key experts working on the project, this approach is very beneficial for promptly testing the efficacy of earlier antibodies and vaccinations on a newly evolving viral strain. The rapid movement of particles resembling viruses in November 2021, the Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2 was found in South Africa. Epidemiology data suggest that the new variant of the virus spreads more easily than the original strain, which was found in South Africa in November 2021. Furthermore, as compared to other strains of the virus, it has been observed to cause a higher number of breakthrough infections in individuals who were previously infected with COVID-19 or who had had a full vaccine against it. Beginning in early 2021, the SARS-CoV-2 virus will be researched utilizing virus-like particles. The membrane, envelope, nucleocapsid, and spike proteins make up the structure of the viral particle, and these particles make up that structure. Virus-like particles, on the other hand, lack the virus's DNA and hence cannot infect humans. Working with virus-like particles is thus a safer option than working with real viruses. The rate at which scientists can create new virus-like particles is much faster than the rate at which they can create new live viral variations for investigation. The researchers created virus-like particles for the sake of this investigation. These particles contain the same proteins as the SARS-CoV-2 virus but do not contain the viral DNA. Working with these particles is therefore far less risky than working with live viruses. The researchers discovered a link between the effectiveness of virus-like particle assembly and the infectiousness of the full, live virus that corresponded to it. According to the findings of the cell culture study, if a virus-like particle with a certain mutation was more effective at creating viral particles, then a copy of the live virus containing the same mutation was likewise more infectious. They discovered that virus-like particles with Omicron mutations in the spike protein were twice as infectious as those with the ancestral spike protein. Einstein uploaded up to get together with, there has been a lot of emphasis on spike, Ott says, but we're learning in our system that nucleocapsid is far more important in enhancing the propagation of this virus for both Delta and Omicron. There has been a lot of attention paid to spiking. If we want to improve existing vaccines or stop the spread of COVID-19, I believe we need to look into targets other than the spike protein. We are still a long way from understanding this variation completely, but our findings add to the increasing evidence that it appears to be exceptional at infecting and very adept at avoiding antibodies, the researchers wrote. Omicron contains a large number of mutations, and our findings suggest that some of these alterations are truly damaging to the virus, the researchers wrote. We discovered that virus-like particles with Omicron mutations in the membrane or envelope proteins were no more infectious than the ancestral virus-like particles. They were, in fact, just about half as infectious as some other types. On the other hand, removing such constraints suggests that Omicron may evolve into an even more contagious strain. How can Omicron avoid detection by antibodies? The researchers also looked at whether the antibodies could prevent SARS-like COV-2 particles from replicating. By providing over 2 million vaccines across the United States, they cooperated with Curative's innovation team to develop a comprehensive serum biobank. This was done to collect as much information as possible. The serum of 38 people who had been immunized against COVID-19 or who had not been immunized but had recovered from the virus was used by the researchers. In addition, the researchers used the serum of 8 people who had received a booster immunization in the prior 3 weeks. The researchers next explored if these serum samples could block the virus-like particles that they had generated. 
The Sarah of people who had received the Pfizer, BioNTech or Moderna vaccine within the previous four to six weeks showed high levels of neutralization against virus-like particles of ancestral SARS-CoV-2. Nevertheless, neutralization levels were three times lower for Delta variant particles and nearly 15 times lower for Omicron variant particles. Those who had received the Johnson & Johnson immunization or recovered from COVID-19 demonstrated modest levels of neutralization against the ancestral virus-like particles, with little difference between the Delta and Omicron forms. Furthermore, the researchers demonstrated that two to three weeks after getting a third dose from Pfizer BioNTech, each of the eight people in the study who received the boost had measurable levels of antibodies capable of neutralizing all SARS-CoV-2 variants, including Omicron. Despite the fact that the people had not been exposed to any other SARS-CoV-2 strains prior to the study, this was the case. Despite this, there were only one-eighth as many antibodies to Omicron as there were to the original virus. It also provides an explanation for the fact that booster shots from mRNA vaccines appear to provide some further protection, even against Omicron. Furthermore, the monoclonal antibodies casirivimab and imdivimab demonstrated significant levels of neutralization against the ancestral and delta forms of SARS-CoV-2 but no detectable neutralization against the Omicron-like particles. We are a long way from having a thorough understanding of this variant, but our findings add to the increasing evidence that it appears to be highly effective at infecting and very effective at avoiding antibodies, the researcher added.